All right, let's get going. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude in part two of the Academy 132nd scale Sop with Camel. So in this episode I am going to start construction on this kit. So just up front this is not going to be a step by step by step thing. I'm going to talk about certain aspects of the kit and what I'm doing. Uh, maybe a little bit more in depth than just a quick review type build, but not as in-depth as uh, the step-by-step -step builds I've done in the past. So I'll focus a little bit more on certain things like rigging and uh, some of the stuff I'm having to do to make things look a little bit better, including the first thing I'm going to do, and that's filling taking care of ejector pin marks before I even do anything else I'm going to take a look at all the parts and I'm going to start filling in these ejector pin marks um, as I mentioned in part one um, the intro to this kit I noted that there are quite a few ejector pin marks uh, scattered about this kit um, that I knew going into because I've read some reviews and seen some video reviews on this particular kit and that seems to be the biggest complaint is these ejector pin marks and their prominence in very visible areas. So like on these wings we've got one, two, yeah we got two there, three, four, five, six and a very faint one right there. So there's six and a half seven on the upper wing there are one two three four on the lower wing oh five six one there and one there now there's a couple in here but those don't need to be messed with because they're not visible so I'm going to have to fill those in. There are some on the inside of the fuselage, but because of the small cockpit opening size, uh, I am not going to deal with those because that is just a little bit beyond the amount of work that I want to put into it. Um, so I'm going to focus on the visible. And on the fuselage, that's the only part where it is visible. There are also some on the... There's four on each wheel, and those are going to be real fun because one side is below the surface, the other side is above on some of them. Uh, we got one right here on the rudder, and there's another one there. There's one there. some on the floorboard but again that's not going to be visible so i'm not even going to worry about those there's a couple of small ones here next to the hub of the prop um so you get the idea they're just they're all over the place so i'm going to have to go through and clean those up so i'm going to work on those a little bit i might come back and show you what i'm doing to fix them and maybe discuss some of the different methods that I'm using to fix them. But uh, I don't know. See, there's five here on the horizontal tail surfaces. So, yeah. So I got my work cut out for me. So I will come back in a little while and we'll see what I've got accomplished. All right. I filled in all of the stuff that needs to be dealt with and hopefully uh, hopefully it will work so in the meantime while all that is curing because I, I want to let it cure for sure overnight <clears throat> so in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these um,
Actually, I'm probably going to have to paint this stuff because I think the floor is supposed to be... Uh, no, I think I should be all right. Yeah, I think I can glue those two parts in here. And then the seat is supposed to be... leather seat and then the wicker stuff on the back so I think I'll get those parts cut off and start cleaning them up all right let's touch base here and see what's going on so I pretty much cut off all the parts for step one and two um, I also used some sprue goo and filled in those ejector pin marks that were all over the place. And I think I pretty much got them all on the whole kit. Got them here. You can see where I sanded. It's kind of dull looking. So I think I'm good with all of that. So I um, worked on the fuselage parts and all of the cockpit parts now I am going off of what the instructions recommend and I'm kind of referring to some photos of the real deal so for those of you out there who know World War One aircraft I am probably doing most of this wrong however this is really an exercise in building a biplane with rigging for a future project. So, you know, be kind. So anyway, what I did here is I sprayed this part in here as if it were canvas, doped canvas. This part here as if it were plywood or laminated wood, whatever they used. And this part here, silver because this part out here is metal from everything I can see. This part here is wood, again, from what I can see. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing, and hopefully it will turn out okay. So with that, um, I also sprayed the bulkhead, or the firewall, whatever you want to call it, and the engine, and the seat, which is wickerish and then this part here whatever this is that goes from one side to the other this is the um, assuming the headrest instrument panel and yeah then these two parts here these have to be painted black so I'm ready to do a little bit of brush painting on this here and this here so for the instrument panel, those are colors one and flat back, flat white. So it looks like I'm thinking, if I'm not mistaken, on the instrument panel, yeah, the instruments are black with white markings. So what I'm going to do with this so I'm not actually going to paint it black. I am going to carefully um, run a thickish wash in there to make it black. And then I'll have to paint these two little parts here. Uh, this part here should be black as well. And then... Um, Yeah, these parts on the top, I'm not sure about those. But anyway, that's that. And then I'm also going to run a wash inside of here. I'm monkey around a little bit with making uh, wood grain in here, but eh, I'm not too concerned about it because, you know, once this thing gets put together like this, 
and has the seat and everything in place and the cowling here. Not a whole lot's going to be visible on the inside. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to work some on this stuff and then come back and uh, check in with everybody and let you know what's going on. All right, here it is so far. So up to this point, um, wipe my greasy fingerprints off here, but I did the, um, got everything glued together. The um, glue in this stuff was actually kind of tricky. The floor was fine, but getting this part here, the instrument panel, and then this headrest piece here, it was kind of tricky because they do not fit positively. Like, there's not a positive fit um, for this just to go on one side and then you know, to glue it in place and then put it together. So what I had to do is I had to get the the uh, floorboard in place and kind of leave this gapped open just a little bit and drop this and this. This one wasn't too bad, this cross member here and this headrest. That was the worst. I actually put that in uh, from underneath and uh, just kind of, you know, it was just swinging freely. So I had to hold it to where it was in the right place and carefully stab my brush through there, get the cement and let it dry really good before I, uh, I moved on. So, you know, it's not, you know, possible, obviously I did it, but it's, it's kind of tricky, but I got it in the end. These parts here, uh, the spine and the this part here, they actually fit really good. Now these are sanded down smooth. That's just discolored from cutting them off. So there shouldn't they shouldn't be they shouldn't leave any um, shouldn't be able to see it once it's painted. But these two halves fit together really well. I was really stoked. Um, Got a little bit of a, a little bit of filling to do right there, but that that won't be very hard. And as you can see, I also got the uh, the rigging put in place. Now I don't know if I talked about it, but basically what they do is they label each one with a letter, and they tell you what length each piece needs to be. So that's what I did is I cut them to length. Uh, these holes here, I had to drill out. They were either flashed over or they were left undrilled or not molded with holes for some reason. Don't know why, but it was easy. Just drilled them really quick. It's my micro mark drill bits here. Put everything in place, glued each one of those. Now I didn't do these little loopy you know, things like they show here, I, that seemed like an excessive amount of work. So all I did was just poke it through a little bit and glued it with uh, gel super glue. And they're all in there nicely. Now, I will say that my uh, partner in crime and fellow YouTuber, uh, Jim at Shutter Ace was wondering if, uh, acrylic lacquer paint would negatively affect the Easy Line brand. Rigging line I'm using. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna try it out and see. So I got a little scrap, I don't have it anymore, but what I did is I just kind of looped around the end of the bristles of a paintbrush and dipped it completely submerged the loop part of the piece of rigging into the lacquer paint, in this case, um, SMS, German Brown is what I had out for using some, for something else. And then just let it dry. And then I pulled on it, pulled it. I mean, I pulled it, I had a piece about this long and I stretched it way out. It didn't dissolve, it didn't cause a weak spot or anything. So 
that answers the question. It doesn't cause any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that little bit right there. And um, yeah, I just may just need a little bit more sanding. I'll put a little bit of filler on there. I'll just put a, need to put a little bit of filler in there. I don't know what, why that is a hole like that. I'm not even sure what that's supposed to be. But no parts go into it. So I may cut out a little disc of plastic and put down in there. Or try and find a piece of photo etch, round photo etch that'll fit in there. But uh, we'll see. So anyway, to fill that up, I'm going to use this stuff right here. All right, so I'm going to let that cure up really well, and uh, then I'll sand it once it's dried, and I can move on. So that will complete the entirety of step number one. So I think, um, I'm not sure how long this video is, but I think I'm going to end this one here with step one. And uh, next time, come back with step two, get into the engine, firewall. And attaching uh, those parts onto the front of the aircraft so that ends part number two of the Academy 132nd scale SOP with camel uh, F uh, F1 I believe yes F1 so if you like this video if you want to see more of my builds why don't you subscribe and if you want to get notifications, just hit the old notification button, and that way you'll know whenever I post stuff up. If you have any questions, comments, hints, tips, concerns, anything like that about this kit, or if you just want to blab, use the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So, that's it. Thanks for watching Plastic Models by a regular dude, and I will see you all later.